Hi guys, it's Mandy from Lady and Pops. Um, welcome to Food 52. Today we're gonna be doing something, I'm gonna call it a omelet duvet over spicy fiery gochujang fried rice. So first of all, here I have some ground beef and I'm going to season the ground beef with a little bit of fish sauce, just one teaspoon. I'm using fish sauce just because I always use fish sauce instead of salt, if I can. But if you only have salt, season it with salt. I'm going to also add a bit of starch to the beef. This is a very, you know, my dog sleeps all day long. And once I start recording, they decide to go on a little wrestling match. So the starch. Starch in ground beef, very common practice in um, Asian cooking. And basically the starch um, gives the ground beef a softened texture, okay? Because ground beef itself can be sometimes a little dry. And the starch adds kind of like a lubricant, okay? For that beef. So once I have the starch in, like I said, I'm not gonna overly season this beef. Once the starch is evenly incorporated, I'm going to add three anchovy filet. This is a really important flavoring agent. I, I consider anchovy a flavoring agent. It's not going to taste fishy, but when the anchovy breaks down and gets caramelized, it becomes really nutty and it, all, it has kind of the same um, effect as a fish sauce. Like it just gives the, the, a really rich umami flavor to, to whatever you're making, really. So next, let's talk about the omelet, okay? Three large eggs. But before I crack them, I'm actually going to make a starch starch slush, which is basically just starch mixed with some kind of liquid, okay? Why do I need this? If you don't add the starch, because the omelet is going to be so kind of like soft and fragile, it's going to break easily. The starch gives the omelet more pliability, if you will, okay? It makes it like not easily breakable when you fold them and stuff like that. So it's really important that you don't skip this. So I'm using potato starch. You can use potato starch too, which is two of my favorite, but if you absolutely have to, you can use corn starch too. Um, I don't prefer corn starch because it cooks at a higher temperature, meaning I have to bring my eggs to a higher temperature for the, for the starch to activate. I don't like that, but you know, in this, in this particular, recipe, it's, it's fine, okay? So I'm going to whisk my starch evenly with the milk first. Why? Because if you don't um, and you just crack the egg in, you're gonna have lumps of the starch, okay? So, cracking eggs, cracking eggs. Oh my God, I feel like I need a bigger bowl here. I'm a horrible egg cracker. I always get shells in my cracked eggs. Why is that? Okay. Now I have to, I can't really show you without spilling it. Cracked eggs, okay. Um, quarter teaspoon of salt. Scant quarter teaspoon because we're gonna add cheese. So we don't wanna make this overly salty. Now whisk, whisk, whisk. It's really important that you add the salt and let the egg kind of sweat out a little bit. Um, it makes a creamier scrambled egg actually. Now let's talk cheese. Last ingredient, cheese, cheese, cheese. I have tried so many different types of cheese for this recipe and I came to the conclusion that the best one you can use is this. Laughing Cow, original Laughing Cow cheese, okay? Okay, I mean, you might be thinking, why can I use like, you know, I don't know, like cheddar cheese or mozzarella cheese? I tried all that, but the thing is, you want 
a cheese that is not just creamy, but but it doesn't require to be at a very high temperature to be melty. You know what I mean? So like mozzarella and like you know cheddar cheese and all that, they kind of stay a little bit solid if they're not hot enough. And the omelet doesn't have enough you know heat to keep it soft. You know during this whole time. So I think like you know this laving cow cheese is your best option. Okay. Having said that, I'm also going to add two pieces of gouda, two slices of gouda, um, just for that stringy effect. And now we're gonna start cooking. So here I have a really large nonstick flat skillet here. I'm going to use it to fry the rice as well as doing the omelet because you know I don't have to clean two pots. So I'm going to add two tablespoons of canola oil and then one tablespoon of toasted sesame oil. I'm gonna put um, the pan on medium high heat and the first thing that's gonna go into the pan is the ground beef and the anchovies because remember I put them in the same bowl. It's not super crucial that your pan is super hot before the beef goes in. it will come up to temperature and that is fine. Even though it looks ridiculous, but I always <laughs> wear these huge mitts when I cook, which is, I think I pride myself in not getting hurt a lot in the kitchen. I think that's just one of the reason why. So it's starting to sizzle now. So once it starts to do that, um, use your spatula to break off the meat. And the anchovy is gonna splatter. That's why I'm wearing this. There's no shame, okay? There's no, there's no glory and pain, in my opinion. We wanna get this really browned up really nicely, especially the anchovies. You don't want to buy into a whole chunk of anchovies. That's not gonna be pleasant. So you want the anchovy to dissolve into the oil. So once the beef becomes browned on the edges, you don't want to cook them to death either. You just want them browned on the edges, okay? Now this is when you add your garlic and chili powder. The chili powder is going to immediately thigh the oil in this glorious hoosh color. <laughs> that's, that's French for red. Once it becomes fragrant, add the gochujang. I want to actually kind of cook the gochujang. Gochujang, how do you actually pronounce it? I want to actually cook the gochujang in the oil. It's kind of activated, you know, sort of. About like 30 seconds, okay, for the gochujang to be in the oil. You see how red and gorgeous the oil has become? That is really important. You want that oil to take on all the flavor and that oil is gonna go and coat all the rice. Speaking of which, rice goes in. Now you want to really press down. During this time I like to turn off my heat, uh, not off, turn down the heat a little bit, so maybe like medium low. Because I don't want the ingredients to burn before I can break off the rice because sometimes they can be a little stubborn. So you wanna really break all the clumps of the rice so it incorporates and gets coated by the really, really yummy, now fully seasoned oil. Once you have kind of the rice sort of broken up, you can now add Three tablespoons of 
mushroom powder and the black pepper and the allspice. Really important, okay? Now, start mixing again. Oh my god! Disaster happens. <laughs> We're gonna pretend nothing happens. And at this point, you're pretty much done with the fried rice when all the um, grains are coated. And last but not least, we're going to add the scallion, okay? Once the scallion is in, I turn off the, the heat. I let the residual heat finish cooking the scallion. If you know me at all, you know I'm obsessed with torches, okay? Um, but the blowtorch is going to give you that breath of wok that so many people saw for um, for a truly great fried rice. Is that a little bit of charred, burnt taste. If you don't have a blowtorch by now, I don't know what to say to you. What are you waiting for, huh? What are you waiting for? So, the heat is already off, right? But right now you're just going to go in and then give the surface a really good scorching. And that lid that you are causing is going to add a lot of flavor and complexity to the dish. And as you're, as I'm doing this, I can I can already smell it really. So I toss the rice around, and once I feel like I've gotten like a good even scorching on most of the grains. That's good enough for me. So I'm going to transfer the fried rice into a bowl. And I'm actually going to make, like shape it into like a little mount. So as you are putting the rice into the bowl, use your spatula or whatever, or spoon to like, you know, press it down into like a little mount. You want this to be taller than it is more important to be tall than wide, okay? I mean, is it necessary? Obviously, no. I mean, you can put your omelet on a pile of like, I don't know, rice that's laying around everywhere, but you know, I'm just showing you how I like, to, like it to look in the final presentation. And when the duvet sits on top of it, you know, that's gonna complete the look. There you go. Now let me move on to the omelet. I have three tablespoons of melted clarified butter. You can use normal butter, but clarified butter just has more intense flavor. And I'm going to add about two tablespoons to the, um, the egg that you scrambled. Not scrambled, to the egg that you have beaten in the bowl, and then just mix it in. Don't add the butter in the plant in the pan and then put the eggs in because well you need a non-stick pan okay that's for sure please do not try to make this with a not non-stick surface okay you're gonna regret it but um because the skillet is already non-stick um if you add the oil in the egg is going to have difficulty um grabbing onto the skillet and it's it needs to do that in order to create that really soft, plush, duvet-like surface that we're looking for. Okay, so once you mix the egg in, we're actually gonna start with a cold skillet, okay? This is not my 15 second magic scrambled eggs. So as soon as the sides started to set, I started stirring and I took it off the heat. You want this egg to slowly cook up so it's nice and creamy and especially you won't be able to create that that really soft duvet looking surface if you are using too high of heat. So I'm going to put the heat to, I'm gonna say 
say like about medium, okay? Medium heat. And then I'm gonna start just slowly swirling the egg around. I feel like I lost like, I don't know, half of my energy just based on that spatula accident. Now I'm like brain dead. Now you can see that egg is starting to coagulate a little bit. Once it does, once it's starting to do that, stop um, using your spatula and then start to twirl your skillet so that the eggs are basically being distributed I feel like I'm just like speaking in broken sentences so start twirling your skillet instead and let the egg kind of run along to the edges and then eventually it's gonna become too thick that it cannot run anymore right once it doesn't run anymore that's fine, okay? Turn your heat down to low. And then this is when you add the cheese. Add one slice of Gouda in the center, okay? And yes, I like to blow torch it again because I want my cheese to have, even my cheese to have that um, little charred flavor. Once that's done, you're gonna put your Laughing cow cheese in the center. <clears throat> and I really recommend that you let the cheese come to room temperature before you cook, okay? Torch again. And then another piece of Gouda on top. And this Gouda on the top is kind of gonna act like a like a glue, sort of, when I fold the omelet. Now I'm gonna brush the rest of the clarified butter on my spatula, spatula a little bit. And then I'm going to first release the egg around the edges. And I have a little thon here, I mean thon. <laughs> I have a little ton here that I'm going to use to lift the edges up and then it's going to help me fold it with my spatula, see? I lift the edges up so I can get my spatula in there and then I fold it. And then it's going to stick to that piece of um, gouda on top. There, now we have a folded little omelet. Now, Brush it with a little special with a little bit of oil again, and then just ah. there you have it. Omelet. You can see why I'm calling it omelet duvet fried rice, right? Because it just looks like there's a yellow golden comforter on top of your fried rice. Doesn't that look so comforting? It makes you want to dive in. Let me see if I can get a little mid section. Now I'm gonna taste the omelet on its own first. Wow. I'm so happy right now. All that crazy disaster anxiety is so worth it. Oh, and the omelet is so soft and fluffy and tender. And seriously, laughing cow is the shit. And then I'm gonna eat it with the fried rice. So good. Actually, I kind of think that this is like two, re two really good recipe put into one because the fried rice is so good on its own. 
if you don't have the omelet you just want to make the fried rice that's totally fine cool too if you just want to eat the omelet that is also totally cool put together mm. so that's it guys i hope you like this recipe let me know it's so good so yummy so comforting and not hard to make at all so i'll see you next time bye